September 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 10 through 12 of the Old Testament. Those who enact unjust policies are as good as dead. Those who are always instituting unfair regulations to keep the poor from getting fair treatment and to deprive the oppressed among my people of justice so they can steal what widows own and loot what belongs to orphans. What will you do on Judgment Day when destruction arrives from a distant place? To whom will you run for help? Where will you leave your wealth? You will have no place to go except to kneel with the prisoners or to fall among those who have been killed. Despite all this, his anger does not subside and his hand is ready to strike again. Assyria, the club I use to vent my anger, is as good as dead, a cudgel with which I angrily punish. I sent him against a godless nation. I ordered him to attack the people with whom I was angry, to take plunder and to carry away loot, to trample them down like dirt in the streets. But he does not agree with this. His mind does not reason this way, for his goal is to destroy and to eliminate many nations. Indeed, he says, are not my officials all kings? Is not Kalna like Carchemish, Hamath like Arpad? Samaria like Damascus. I overpowered kingdoms ruled by idols, whose carved images were more impressive than Jerusalem's or Samaria's. As I have done to Samaria and its idols, so I will do to Jerusalem and its idols. But when the sovereign master finishes judging Mount Zion and Jerusalem, then I will punish the king of Assyria for what he has proudly planned and for the arrogant attitude he displays. For he says, by my strong hand I have accomplished this, by my strategy that I devised. I invaded the territory of nations and looted their storehouses. Like a mighty conqueror, I brought down rulers. My hand discovered the wealth of the nations as if it were in a nest. As one gathers up abandoned eggs, I gathered up the whole earth. There was no wing flapping or open mouth chirping. Does an axe exalt itself over the one who wields it? Or a saw magnify itself over the one who cuts with it? As if a scepter should brandish the one who raises it, or a staff should lift up what is not made of wood. For this reason the sovereign master, the Lord who commands armies, will make his healthy ones emancipated. His majestic glory will go up in smoke. The light of Israel will become a fire, their holy one will become a flame. It will burn and consume the Assyrian king's briars and his thorns in one day. The splendor of his forest and his orchard will be completely destroyed as when a sick man's life ebbs away. There will be so few trees left in his forest, a child will be able to count them. At that time, those left in Israel, those who remain of the family of Jacob, will no longer rely on a foreign leader that abuses them. Instead, they will truly rely on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. A remnant will come back, a remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. For though your people, Israel, are as numerous as the sand on the seashore, only a remnant will come back. Destruction has been decreed. Just punishment is about to engulf you. The sovereign master, the Lord who commands armies, is certainly ready to carry out the decreed destruction throughout the land. So here is what the sovereign master, the Lord who commands armies, says, My people who live in Zion, do not be afraid of Assyria, even though they beat you with a club and lift their cudgel against you as Egypt did. For very soon my fury will subside and my anger will be directed toward their destruction. The Lord who commands armies is about to beat them with a whip similar to the way he struck down Midian at the rock of Oreb. He will use his staff against the sea, lifting it up as he did in Egypt. At that time, the Lord will remove their burden from your shoulders and their yoke from your neck. The yoke will be taken off because your neck will be too large. They attacked Aeth, moved through Migron, depositing their supplies at Michmash. They went through the pass, spent the night at Geba, Ramah trembled. Gibeah of Saul ran away. Shout out, daughters of Galam. Pay attention, Laisha. Answer her, Anathoth. Madmina flees. The residents of Gibam have hidden. 
This very day standing in Nob, they shake their fist at daughter Zion's mountain, at the hill of Jerusalem. Look, the sovereign master, the Lord who commands armies, is ready to cut off the branches with terrifying power. The tallest trees will be cut down, the loftiest ones will be brought low. The thickets of the forest will be chopped down with an axe, a mighty Lebanon will fall. A shoot will grow out of Jesse's rootstock, a bud will sprout from its roots. The Lord's spirit will rest on him, a spirit that gives extraordinary wisdom, a spirit that provides the ability to execute plans, a spirit that produces absolute loyalty to the Lord. He will take delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by mere appearances or make decisions on the basis of hearsay. He will treat the poor fairly and make right decisions for the downtrodden of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and order the wicked to be executed. Justice will be like a belt around his waist. Integrity will be like a belt around his hips. A wolf will reside with a lamb, and a leopard will lie down with a young goat. An ox and a young lion will graze together, as a small child leads them along. A cow and a bear will graze together, their young will lie down together. A lion, like an ox, will eat straw. A baby will play over the hole of a snake, over the nest of a serpent, an infant will put his hand. They will no longer injure or destroy on my entire royal mountain, for there will be universal submission to the Lord's sovereignty, just as the waters completely cover the sea. At that time, a root from Jesse will stand like a signal flag for the nations, Nations will look to him for guidance, and his residence will be majestic. At that time, the sovereign master will again lift his hand to reclaim the remnants of his people from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shiner, Hamath, and the sea coast. He will lift a signal flag for the nations. He will gather Israel's dispersed people and assemble Judah's scattered people from the four corners of the earth. Ephraim's jealousy will end and Judah's hostility will be eliminated. Ephraim will no longer be jealous of Judah and Judah will no longer be hostile toward Ephraim. They will swoop down on the Philistine hills to the west. Together they will loot the people of the east. They will take over Edom and Moab and the Ammonites will be their subjects. The Lord will divide the gulf of the Egyptian sea. He will wave his hand over the Euphrates River and send a strong wind. He will turn it into seven dried up streams and enable them to walk across in their sandals. There will be a highway leading out of Assyria for the remnants of his people, just as there was for Israel when they went up from the land of Egypt. At that time you will say, I praise you, O Lord, for even though you were angry with me, your anger subsided and you consoled me. Look, God is my deliverer. I will trust in him and not fear. For the Lord gives me strength and protects me. He has become my deliverer. Joyfully you will draw water from the springs of deliverance. At that time you will say, Praise the Lord. Ask him for help. Publicize his mighty acts among the nations. Make it known that he is unique. Sing to the Lord, for he has done magnificent things. Let this be known throughout the earth. Cry out and shout for joy, O citizens of Zion, for the Holy One of Israel acts mightily among you. God, while I was out today, I was talking to a woman in, a, in an antique shop, and we were talking about the pending World War III. <laughs> Possibly by the time some people listen to this, we could be in World War III, but we were talking talking about that and she said I, I don't understand why can't people just like each other and, and just get along I don't understand why people and countries always have to argue and I said well pretty much from early Bible ages it's been happening and I I was about to go into pretty much a whole sermon about uh, how people behave and sin and God's will and what Satan does and um, and then a couple other people came in the shop and so our conversation got cut off but 
how interesting that today's reading is all about that, about the fact that it is your will what happens in this world, uh, that Satan is using people to do his bidding, to do bad, to do evil uh, in this world. And I can see that all around me. I can even see sometimes how he uses me, which scares me so much, but I can see how that happens. But I love reading in these passages, like uh, chapter 10, uh, but when the sovereign master finishes ju judging Mount Zion and Jerusalem, then I will punish the king of Assyria for what he has proudly planned and for the arrogant attitude he displays. So not only do you command armies to do good for you, but you take all the people who are doing bad through Satan or vice versa, and you use them for your good as well, use them for your will. And I think back to the story of Judas uh, on the Last Supper night, where it says in your word that he was being used by the devil. And it always humors me to think of that conversation between you and the devil of, hey devil, thanks for setting that up. That's exactly what I needed to have happen so that I could save the world. <laughs> And we see that here in the situation with uh, future, as Isaiah is prophesizing, future wars that are about to happen um, with Assyria and what, what will happen and what won't happen. And I see that in my own life, but I don't stop and think of it when I'm in the midst of drama or trouble or something I think is bad. That it's the same situation, that there's a chance that Satan's doing something bad. And I say chance because not everything that happens in our life that we think is bad comes from Satan. A lot of times it's you doing things in our lives that are actually good for us and we just think that they're bad. <laughs> um, but I can see people in my life, especially lately, who are intentionally being used by, by Satan to do his bidding and to sidetrack me and to keep me not focused on, on your word, God. And how amazing it is. And ironically, the same person a year and a half ago did the same thing. And how amazing that both times, all it did was draw me closer to you, deepen and strengthen our relationship so that I could be stronger for your kingdom. And when I'm in the midst of it, it's really hard to see. When I'm in the midst of somebody intentionally hurting me, um, it's really hard to see your ultimate goal. Uh, and it's not that I need to know it, it's just sometimes really hard when you're in the midst of all of these emotions and feelings to, to grab a hold of that faith and trust and ultimate plan. But throughout the Bible, we see you always using everything for your good, using bad people for your good, using good people for your good, using Satan's will for your good. Everything is used for your glory, God. So even if I am being persecuted and not not in any way that people around the world are persecuted as Christians, but simply persecuted by somebody who is being used by Satan. Ultimately, you used it for good. You used it to make me stronger in your words, stronger in our relationship. And I've been able to reach more people. Uh, albeit for a while, I was sidetracked. <laughs> I, was, I was caught up in the drama of what was happening. I was caught up in the worldliness. Uh, and I can't thank you enough for your will to intercede in my life and stop that and send me on a new path, a, a different way of thinking about things and dealing with things. The persecution's still there, um, but your will superseded the will of that person or more importantly, the will of Satan. That just gets me real excited, but I do need to the next time I'm in that situation <laughs> is remember that your will for what happens in this world will always win. We know in the end who wins, uh, but day in and day out, your will is still controlling what happens here on earth. God, help, help remind me, strengthen me and remind me that when drama and turmoil and worldly things come into my life to acknowledge and intentionally label what is happening, um, be able to have the discernment to understand that Satan is using somebody else or potentially using me for a situation and acknowledge my faith and trust in you that your will will set things right that your will will supersede anything else that is is being planned 
Now, sometimes, especially like we see in the Bible, some of those evil plans can go on for a very, very long time. Uh, lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes, generations and generations. And we still have to have that faith and trust in you that your plan, the totality of that big plan is what is in play. That you are intimately involved with our lives day in and day out. You know exactly what is happening. You know exactly who is doing what. And more importantly, you know what you have planned for us. You've always known what you had planned for us. Allow my plan for my life to completely go away, God. Allow me to just lay it at your feet today and allow your plan to supersede anything that I had planned. Allow your plan to supersede anything anybody else's plan had for my life. God, I just want to live the life that you have planned for me. And as Isaiah says, I will always sing to you for all the magnificent things you have done so that people throughout the earth know the incredible, amazing things that you have done in my life. In your son's name I pray. Amen.